If you've been searching around and trying to figure out what a heat pump water heater might actually save you if you swap it out, then this video is for you. There's a bunch of information coming out now about heat pump water heaters, but I still find a lot of it confusing. And the main issue is that a lot of it's not tailored towards your specific location and your unique electric rates, so you can't figure out what your real numbers are. And that includes using the energy guide label because that's only one number where in reality, the electric rates all over the country can vary anywhere from three to 400% different than another location. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to calculate your exact energy savings when switching from a regular electric conventional tank water heater to an electric heat pump hot water heater. And I've got some charts and I'll also show you how to use our calculator on the website as well so you can see all the real numbers. Let's get into it. My name's Aaron Schein and I'm the founder of Attainable Home and we use affordable real estate combined with practical sustainability to increase your wealth and well-being. So what is a heat pump water heater anyway? It's basically like an electric conventional tank water heater. It has the heating elements inside but the difference is it has a heat pump sitting on top of it and you can tell because you can see a fan there on top and the big deal is that these save a lot more energy than just using the electrical coils or the heating elements inside a regular conventional electric and also what seems to come up a lot when i have a lot of conversations with clients and contractors i start talking about the heat pump water heater and they ask me immediately if you mean a tankless. And the, the, no, a tankless instant hot water heater is separate from a heat pump hot water heater. So they're two totally different things. And other than just the heat pump unit sitting on top of the new tank as compared to the old, on the install, it's pretty much the same, except you need a condensate drain for the heat pump itself. And then the manufacturer will specify some cubic area of air volume that it needs because it's taking the hot air out of the ambient air around the tank and moving that into the water. So it needs some airflow. And you can do that in a bigger open space with ventilation, or you can vent them directly and do some ducting to it. And as a quick note, before jumping into the energy savings, I personally love these heat pump water heaters. I've installed two of them on two different net zero home renovations that I did in Florida. And you can check the channel for those stories. I documented the full case studies, but I've had them for three years. They've given me no problems. And then they also give the energy savings, which is massive when especially trying to lower your bill and go all the way to net zero potentially. So I would totally recommend these, but let's jump into the energy savings. So I made a couple charts here because I wanted to visually show you the actual savings numbers and why it's such a big deal on these heat pump water heaters. For the first chart here, what I wanted to do was take actual numbers. So I went on the big box stores, Lowe's and Home Depot. Lowe's is the AO Smith model and Home Depot is the Ream model. They both work well. I've installed both of them in my house projects. And what I did was go and take the energy guide label for each one, both the regular cheaper conventional one that you'll find usually in stock there, and also the heat pump version or the hybrid version, that means the same thing. And you can visually see here the kilowatt hour usage per year and the difference. And what I did was put the size down the middle, 30 to 80 gallons, so you can see the different numbers. And then I took the average savings of all of them combined, and they're all roughly uh, proportionally the same, but you can see that using the heat pump model, you're gonna save about 75% energy when comparing to the typical conventional tank. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you. And taking the data from that first chart, we can then apply a kilowatt hour rate. And I created a chart here that shows sort of the standard rates across the country. And you can see how wildly it varies between the different locations. And so this, chart will represent real energy savings for you and your home instead of just the energy guide label and you can take a screenshot of this you can pause the video to find your rate i'll show you that next or we've got it on the website you can click the link below and for us energy and finance nerds this is a good one because now we can take the real savings numbers and convert it into return on investment, payback period to see what it really does for you other than just arbitrary numbers. Okay, so next I'm going to show you how to calculate your kilowatt hour rate. 
and we'll need one of your electric bills. Okay, first, when you look at the bill, you'll probably see all sorts of charges, and I can't get into all kinds of things like time of use or demand charge, but probably the quickest way to figure out this number is dividing your total spent on electricity, not gas or anything else, just electricity, and dividing that into the kilowatt hour usage per month. And so you can see an example here where you've got all sorts of charges and you've got a total and we're gonna divide that into the total kilowatt hour usage. So let's say on your electric bill for the month, you spend $248 on electricity and it shows 1600 kilowatt hours used for that month. You're just going to divide the 1600 into 248 and that'll give you a cost of 15 and a half cents per kilowatt hour, right? And for another quick example, let's just say your bill's higher, you have a bigger house, you're spending 450 a month on electricity for 1200 kilowatt hour usage per month. We'll divide 1200 into 450 and that gives you a kilowatt hour rate of 37 and a half cents per kilowatt hour, which if you go back to the chart in the video, that'll show you an incredible savings by switching out to the heat pump unit because it saves so much energy. So now that you have your own kilowatt hour rate, you can go back to the chart and see what your yearly savings is. But I would encourage you to click the link in the description and go to our calculator because I included a 10 year return on investment. We include things like the tax credit, the inflation numbers, and it just gets a lot more detailed in terms of what the real impact of swapping out to a new heat pump water heating unit saves you. And with that, I'm going to jump into a screen share where I'll run through the calculator to show you how to input the data and then some results as well. So when you get to the calculator, the link is below, or you can go to attainablehome.com and click the savings calculators up the top. We're looking for the simple heat pump water heater savings calculator. So once you get to the page, you can scroll down and you can either enter your uh, state and it has kind of generic rates or we can enter our own rate. And I'm going to do that because we just calculated it previously in the video and it'll be more accurate. You can also set the inflation rate. Uh, this is important because over the years, the difference really adds up. And then you can select the water heater size that you want. And what I did also on my projects, I actually, upped it a little bit because the energy savings is so big, you can actually afford to have a bigger tank, which is so nice with uh, these kind of heat pump units. So I actually went from a 40 to 50, but for this example, I'll just keep everything 50. And then on the right side, you enter kind of what the maintenance cost over, I figure a 10 year period for this calculator. And the realistic, you're either going to fix uh, over a 10 year period, what you have now, you're either gonna fix or replace the old electric conventional tank. So I put in, I'll just put in a number here, $1,000 to replace it one time, assuming no maintenance. And then the cost of a new heat pump water heater, these are, I'm just gonna put $2,000 in, say at Home Depot or Lowe's for the water heater. And then cost of labor, I'm just gonna put in $800. And then this is a rebate calculation. You wanna check the uh, federal heat pump water heater tax credits, but it's 30% up to $2,000 for all heat pumps, not just, it, it's a combo tax credit. So there is a cap on it, but assuming this might be your only project, I did uh, this auto calculate at 30% up to $2,000, which would be 840 in this example for the total cost. And uh, you can, again, enter your own number and, in there in all of these. So if we scroll down, we get the results, the net cost after rebates, including install, and the cost of the unit is uh, just under $2,000. We've got our electric rate in there. You can see that your calcul calculated energy savings here is right at 76% um, based on the, the numbers. So we're right at 75% savings right now. In this example, it shows you what you're spending on electricity and then what you're spending on electricity if you were to swap out the unit. And so your energy savings per year is shown here. It's got everything. It's got um, savings per year, per month, kilowatt hour savings per year, 
total 10 year savings. And then this is where inflation comes in over a 10 year period. We had 3%, which is kind of where we're hovering right now, according to the Fed. Over a 10 year period, the 10 year savings in nominal dollar terms really adds up. And so your 10 year return on investment for the amount spent today when you factor in energy savings is over 200% in this example. And this is using Colorado rates, which is low. We have low electric rates in relation to the rest of the country. So just in this example, you can see how uh, worth it it is to swap these out. Simple payback is 4.45 years. Actually, the projects I did in Florida with the tax credit at the time were just under three years based on the energy savings. Uh, alone. So again, it changes for your specific location. If you keep scrolling down, the 10 year savings chart shows a real picture and this is interactive. So you can change the numbers above and it'll automatically change all of these numbers, but you've got yearly savings, cumulative savings, and then cumulative savings with inflation added in. So you can see the difference there. That's, these are the same numbers in table form. So you can go by year. One thing I like to point out, the average person spends about seven years in their home. So even if you go to five or seven years on the savings, you'll see that the savings adds up oh, seven years. In this example, you'll save about $4,300 on just energy alone. And then this is your 10 year return on investment with payback uh, considered. So it, it's about the four year mark where you cross over where you get all your money back. And then from here on, this is all money in your pocket. And this is where the return on investments really starts. But this is a nice visual to show when that crossover is. For those of you in the Northeast or California or Hawaii, this crossover period is going to be uh, much less, uh, much less time to pay back all of the energy savings and more. It depends on the costs, of course, to install it and labor and everything. But that's it. So I just wanted to show you kind of how powerful the numbers can look like on the website calculator. So I'll leave it there for today. I hope this helped you figure out what your real energy savings is and maybe clears up a lot about heat pump water heaters in general. I'll be doing a lot more videos on these. We've got a lot more in terms of energy savings and calculators on the website. And if you have any questions about these heat pump water heaters or calculations, just feel free to drop them in the comments. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.